with me this morning here at PDAC. I'm joined by Dan Wilton from First Mining Gold. Dan, good morning. Good morning. Look, a bit of news from you this morning on one of your properties, Gold Lund. You've had some drill results. Give us an update. Yeah, so uh, we've been drilling at Gold Lund pretty continuously since um, June of last year, and we're now drilling a parallel zone to the existing resource at Gold Lund, which is about 800,000 ounces of indicated resource at almost two grams, mm. and uh, about 870,000 ounces of inferred at about a gram and a half. So um, we're drilling on a parallel zone and put out this morning uh, 21 meters of five grams in one of these parallel zones in an open pit target. Uh, we think it's very, very exciting that this is we think going to continue to demonstrate the ability for this project to keep growing. Right. So the idea behind the, the current programs to what? To expand the resource? It's basically is resource it? expansion. So we, we drilled uh, about 8,000 meters in a satellite target called Miller last year. Uh, and really define that over about 450 meters of strike length. Um, and I think I've demonstrated now that on this 50 kilometers of prospective strike that we have, uh, we've demonstrated that we're going to find other gold deposits there. So um, it's a pretty interesting property with a lot of structural continuity to it. it the trick is finding where that structural continuity is hosting the mineralization. Mm. Have you got a partner here? No, we don't. We own it 100%. Right. Yeah. What about Spring Pole? So Spring Pole, that we're coming along? very active on this year. We've actually got uh, an ice road into the project right now, and we're you know in the middle of all of the technical work around uh, pre-feasibility study, which we kicked off uh, really in January, um, doing some metallurgical drilling, you know, hydrogeological drilling, and some uh, some structural geotech uh, drilling right now. Uh, and all of that is data collection around uh, the PFS work that's ongoing now. So anticipating having a PFS done uh, by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And it's really um, starting into some of the interesting trade-offs that you go through as you take the project from PDA to PFS. But it's pretty exciting. And these two projects we just referred to, these are two of what, six? Two of six, what we got. call our six main projects, yeah. All of our projects in Canada, you know, totaled uh, about seven point four million ounces of indicated resource and another 3.8 have inferred. So uh, big, big resource endowment. And we've been in an environment where, you know, having projects that you can spend money on has kind of been a negative uh, because it sort of introduced these concepts of capital overhang. But you look at the robustness of the resources that we have, and I think we'll demonstrate it with Spring Pole as we move it through PFS. Hmm. Uh, if we are into what looks like uh, an improving gold environment, I think you know, one thing that's becoming very clear, large companies, producers are generating record free cash flow and are having trouble replacing the reserves. So that logically leads to what I think is going to be a pretty constructive market for people who are developing projects, which, you know, no one's cared about since 2012, pretty much. But I think we're coming into an environment where we're going to start seeing some some more active investment into the developers. Well, what are your expectations as far as the near term with the gold price? Are you expecting it to stay fairly firm? Well, listen, I think if the gold price hangs in around 1600 or above, uh, that's great. I personally don't see anything on the horizon, you know, be it through COVID-19 and the anticipations of potential economic challenges. That's really just going to lead central banks to, you know, put more stimulus into the into the fundamental economy, that stimulus is going to come in the form of either lower interest rates or, you know, printing money, and that's all going to be good for gold. So I think the world is, in this, in this environment, is heading into what I think is a really constructive environment for the gold price. Um, you know, I think it could go a lot higher, but I think the industry is making a ton of money at $1,600 gold. Mm. You know, we, we forget that if you assume all in sustaining costs in the gold industry of $1,000, when the gold price went from 1250 to 1500 you're basically doubling the free cash flow of the industry, right? That free cash flow is going to need to find a home and generally find a home in increasing reserves. And it's becoming increasingly difficult for producers to add to their own reserves. I mean, you know, the CEO of Barrick last week said, we're at peak gold, right? We don't know how we're going to replace our reserves. So us sitting with a portfolio of, you know, really interesting development projects in great jurisdictions, you know, a bunch of our projects in Ontario, which I think is one of the best places to permit projects in the world. Um, yeah, we're, we're highly confident of our, uh, of our path forward here. And you've just had a, an Australian firm earn into yes. one of your projects. Into uh, Pickle Crow, our Pickle Crow project, which is a high-grade underground uh, gold project in northwestern Ontario. 
It's kind of the anchor project in the Pickle Lake District, which you know is very analogous to Red Lake, where we say the difference being Red Lake's produced 30 million ounces, Pickle Lake's produced three, but our Pickle Crow project produced a million and a half ounces and an average grade of 16 grams over 30 years, right? It was never a big mine, but you know, consistently profitable high grade mine. And so uh, we have a group coming in to spend $10 million to earn 80% of the project with some cash payments that come to us along the way. Uh, and we end up with a reasonable share position, uh, but we're really excited about, about our partners there who are the same team that's just taken a, a company in Australia, Bellevue Gold, uh, and had amazing exploration success basically going into a high-grade past producing camp and applying you know, modern geological technique to that. So we think that there's a really good prospect for them to do that here as well. That team's got great access to capital, so we expect that uh, you know, they're going to hit the ground running here. We close the transaction, hopefully, you know, in a couple of weeks' time, and then right. they're going to hit the ground running in the spring. So we're very excited about it. And are you firmly focused on what's in the portfolio at the moment, or are you having a look around at some other opportunities? You know, there's always other opportunities that present themselves. Uh, the company was really set up as, you know, as a bit of an acquisition vehicle. Uh, in 2015, 2016, they bought yeah, eight companies or projects in 12 months. So a very busy time. And what's interesting, at the end of the, the last acquisition, this company, first mining, had a market cap of $600 million. So today we're about 150 Canadian. So, uh, and that's having done a lot of really hard work between now and then, you know, 40,000 meters of infill drilling, discovery of, you know, new mineralized uh, prospects on, uh, on Goldland and, you know, two PEAs on Springpole and lots of great technical work, metallurgy, et cetera. So we think that there's, you know, there's always room to look at things that are kind of tangential to our projects, um, but we are really, really focused on de-risking and moving spring pole forward, developing spring pole, because we think this project, which our PEA had an NPV at $1,300 gold of 841 million US, at $1,500 gold, it's 1.2 billion US. Uh, I think you know there's room for multiples of our current market cap just in de-risking, moving spring pole through PFS and getting our permits. Dan, good to meet you. Good to Thank meet you. you. Thanks very much.